ਵਾਹਿਗੁਰੂ ਦੰਡੌਤ ਬੰਦਨ ਅਨਕ ਬਾਰ ਸਰਬ ਕਲਾ ਸਮਰਥ ਡੋਲਨ ਤੇ ਰੱਖ ਹੋ ਪ੍ਰਭੂ ਨਾਨਕ ਦੇ ਕਰ ਹੱਥ ਵਾਹਿਗੁਰੂ ਜੀ ਕਾ ਖਾਲਸਾ ਵਾਹਿਗੁਰੂ ਜੀ ਕੀ ਫਤਿਹ ਸੋ ਗੁਰੂ ਪਿਆਰੀ ਸਾਧ ਸੰਗਤ ਜੀ ਇਟਸ ਮਾਈ ਗ੍ਰੇਟ ਆਨਰ ਟੂ ਬੀ ਹੀਅਰ ਇਨ ਫਰੰਟ ਆਫ ਯੂ ਟੁਡੇ ਟੂ ਟਾਕ ਟੂ ਯੂ ਅਬਾਊਟ ਦ ਸਟੇਟ ਆਫ ਦ ਮਾਈਂਡ ਦ ਬੈਟਲ ਆਫ ਦ ਮਾਈਂਡ ਐਂਡ ਥੇਰ ਇਜ਼ ਅ ਫਿਊ ਡਿਫਰੈਂਟ ਕੰਪੋਨੈਂਟਸ ਆਫ ਥਿਸ ਡਿਸਕਸ਼ਨ when we talk about the mind uh, according to sri guru granth sahib ji according to gurbani so the aspect that we're going to be focusing on today is as we know in the mainstream as we hear about in the news or as we hear about at school um, or as we talk about it in our communities is the topic of mental health so i'll be talking about that and also a little bit about what does sri guru granth sahib ji what does gurbani talk about uh, mental health and the mind and the battle of the mind and we'll be going through this discussion and then also towards the end we'll have an opportunity to kind of converse back and forth and talk about what your perspective is on on the topic to start off i just like to introduce myself to the sangat my name is golpreet singh and i got involved in learning about mental health and being active in this field uh when i was diagnosed with ADHD so that was about 9 years ago now when i was 25 years old and 10 years now and so at that time i was working in the marketing field and i was i had had a lot of challenges in college and in university as you can imagine when you're going through college and university you have a lot of workload you have a lot of different pressures and i would do very very well in some terms and i would do very poorly in other terms and i couldn't understand why my performance in my studies and why my performance um in even tasks at home like managing priorities and doing things on time um why that was a challenge for me and so when i got into the workforce and i started to work in a company that i really liked i had a job that i really enjoyed but i still couldn't complete all my tasks on time and i still had a lot of challenges and so i got diagnosed with adhd um at the start of when i was working in this new job and it took me an entire year to come to terms with that and to actually believe my diagnosis and to actually understand that how how I can deal with it because at the at the first point I didn't believe the psychiatrist I didn't believe the doctor's diagnosis and I just tried to brush it under the rug and eventually when it came up to its surface then I realized that this is something that I have to confront and something that I can um deal with but at the same time while i was trying to deal with it while i was talking to different professionals or while i was going to different groups to learn about this issue um i i came to a realization that i being born and raised here in canada didn't have nearly as much of the challenge as someone would if they didn't speak the language um and if they didn't know the system so it doesn't really matter which country you're from sometimes the medical system can be very difficult to navigate and not only the system itself but even um going for appointments or getting some type of treatment it can take a lot of toll on you to balance everything so i thought that if there's people like me who speak the language who are born and raised in this country who are having challenges there should be some type of support for people who are um not born and raised in this country and don't know the system and don't speak the language so uh, when i started to reach out i found out there there are a lot of services out there but there's a gap there is a big gap between people who provide services and the people who need them and the reason for that is 
the big S word, and the big S word, I'm not sure what you're thinking of right now, but it's stigma. So stigma, it means when people, um, they attribute shame and guilt and uh, fear to the discussion of any topic. So when you attach shame and guilt and fear, and in Punjabi and in Gurmat, they also call it Lok Lajja. And so the concept of Lok Lajja means when you are trying to shy away from people, the society, because of a fear of embarrassment or a fear of your ego getting affected. And we do this a lot of times. We don't only do it regarding mental health. We do it when we have extravagant wedding functions because we want to impress people. We do it when we highly filter our Instagram posts because we want to get more likes. We do it across the board. Um, in our day-to-day -day life, we try to impress other people and we try to hide our challenges from other people and present the most perfect image in front of people. So this is the big barrier between people connecting to the services and it's also a barrier between people connecting to Sikhi because a lot of times people don't even want to talk about it in Sangat which is supposed to be the true school and the true hospital where people come to get treated. Guru Sahib says, Mera bad Guru Gobinda. So if we're coming to Guru Sahib to get treatment but we don't want to talk about the treatment then we have challenges. So I'm going to get started talking about um, a spectrum on the next slide about what is mental health, what is mental, uh, poor mental health and uh, good mental health, and also what is mental wellness and what is mental illness. So we'll, ha we'll take a look at that right now. So as you can see here, there's a spectrum and the spectrum, it shows optimal mental health and poor mental health. And then on the other side of it, it shows serious mental illness and no symptoms. And those of you who are going to university, if you've taken psychology courses, you might have seen this already, or someone who is majoring in psychology or already works in mental health. So please bear with me, uh, those people who already have seen this, but for who, someone who hasn't seen this, just f the basics of it is that um, you can be anywhere on the spectrum at any time in your life. And you might see yourself in a certain quadrant even right now. And like you can see, um, there's optimal mental health without mental illness. So what does it mean to have optimal mental health? It means that you are thriving in your life. You're happy with your job. You're happy with your family. You're happy with your relationships. You're happy with yourself. You love yourself. You love your society. And you are content. You have suk. And at this time, you don't have any mental illness. And surprisingly, maybe, maybe you uh, might not, uh, might not uh, have realized this, but there's a lot of people who have mental illness and they're still in this quadrant. So they'd be in the bottom quadrant. They have a mental illness, but they have optimal mental health. And this goes for any spectrum. A lot of people have physical illnesses and they still are in Chardikala. So this is something that doing Simran and reading Barney and coming to Sangat, it gives you that reinforcement that regardless of whatever you're going through, you still are in Chardikala. And then at the same time, there's people who they have no mental illness. They don't have um, any diagnosis, but they're very uh, grouchy. They're very selfish. They're very jealous. Um, and this is a different level of um, mental health. They have poor mental health, but they have no mental illness. So we can see some of the teachings of Sikhi on the spectrum as well, because the people who have poor mental health, but no mental illness, they're affected by the other aspect of the mind, which is Kam Grodlo Mohankar. So they still get um, jealous, they still talk behind people's back, they still, still do Ninda Chuguli, but they don't have any mental illness. So that person, according to Gurbani, would still be called ill. Guru Sahib says, Jo Jo Di says, So So Rogi Rog Rahat Mira Sat Guru Jogi. So, those people would still be classified as ill because in Gurbani, Guru Sahib, they 
flip everything over. They say that that person is blind who doesn't see Nam, who doesn't see the Guru. Uh, that person can't hear who doesn't hear the Nam. That person doesn't speak who doesn't speak the Nam, doesn't speak Shabd. So sometimes our perception of illness and wellness is different from what Guru Sahib is talking to us. But on the physical level and on the actual experiential level within your Panjitat, within your body, um, you could have a mental illness and you could have very poor mental health or you could have very good mental health. So some of the different types uh, on the next slide, there's a lot of different types of uh, mental illness and these affect your brain. So there's two different components there as well between these two ears. There's your brain, but then your mind is actually, uh, it is actually active throughout your whole body. For example, if someone cuts you on your finger, it hurts, your mind is active there. By Mani Singh Ji, he was able to take his surti away from there and he was able to take his surti connected to Shabad so that even though he had every single band band kate, but he didn't get affected. So that was his mind. At the same time, your brain can be affected by different illnesses as well. So here's a little bit of a review of different illnesses. There's anxiety disorders. So we talk about anxiety. A lot of times we don't know how to talk about these things is because we don't have the words, especially in the South Asian community. A lot of times we don't have the words. So you could say chinta. Um, there's a, two different things that we kind of know about. One is chinta, one is fikr. So a lot of times we would attribute chinta to anxiety and fikr we would say worry. For example, your mom is worried about you making sure that you had your roti, right? Or the, there's, you have a little bit of a worry that you have an exam tomorrow, so you have to wake up on time, those kind of things. But chinta is something deeper, and chinta can turn into a rogue as well. So, right? so those people who have a lot of different possessions and they have a lot of things around them, they get affected. But... Jinta rog can affect anyone and it can affect anyone in any way. So some of the different kinds, panic disorder, agoraphobia, fear of tight spaces, social anxiety disorder, so fear of interacting with people in society, coming outside of your safe space. There's different kinds of phobias and there's also obsessive compulsive disorder and generalized anxiety disorder. When we talk about these things, it's very common for us to just use these words as if they don't mean anything. So a lot of times we say, I'm so OCD, I did this, I did this, I did this. Or I'm so ADHD, I did this, I did this. Or, oh my God, nobody liked my post, I'm so depressed, right? But that is not depression, and that is not OCD, and that is not ADHD. But when we do that, we further stigmatize the people who are actually going through it. Because we minimalize it and we wouldn't dare say we wouldn't dare say that i ha i'm so diabetic i had this laddu right or something like that <laughs> unless you actually have diabetes right we wouldn't stigmatize other uh illnesses but with mental illness a lot of times we use these terms very conveniently very easily without thinking about the consequences so we should actually be careful about that not using these terms just in a joking way but understanding the impact of them yes yes absolutely so people Thank you for that. And I love this. Like, if you have questions, if you want to make it into a discussion, let's do that because I feel like a little bit too <laughs> high up on a stage here. But um, yeah, people try to make things easier to talk about with humor. And they try to make things easier to talk about with jokes and to make things relatable. But at the same time, um, we have to be careful that it doesn't turn into mocking because when we are in a circle of friends and we're talking about something and we might not know that one of our friends is going through something and we just say, I'm so this, I'm so that, we might be stigmatizing them so that they might not want to talk about it openly, what they're actually going through. 
So then there's also mood disorders, including bipolar disorder um, and depression. So again, bipolar, it doesn't mean that if you're happy one day and sad one day that you're bipolar. It means that if you have periods of deep, deep depression and and extreme mania and there's also different variations of bipolar disorder so everyone doesn't have the same range of um, those feelings or those symptoms and there's also different types of depression so there's some people who have major depressive disorder and there's some people who have mild depression or moderate depression or they have a depression that kind of prevents them from feeling good at any time in their life for a few years in their life until they get some type of help but they don't they don't they still go to work so there's a lot of different mental illnesses that are highly functioning and this is where we kind of can get lost because we see people who are going to school or they're coming to sangat and they might just seem like the shy person in the corner or they might just seem like the person who gets very emotional but we might not know that they're actually going through something because it's high functioning they're still going out and taking care of their family and going to their job but they're still struggling as well and what happens with that is sometimes people don't get help and then it gets to a major point where they have a breakdown or something so that's why it's so important to uh, check in with your family and with your friends ask questions try to talk to people and find out are you doing okay i noticed that you're you know feeling down these days can i do anything to help you or i'm here for you if you want to talk so then a couple of the other ones are eating disorders. There's different types of those and psychosis, schizophrenia and personality disorders. I won't go into the definitions of these specifically. Um, I invite you, I encourage you to look into those and actually do research about what are the different kinds of mental illnesses. So on the next slide, there's continued list of different uh, mental illnesses that you might have heard about and you might um, have questions if anyone has any questions about them feel free to ask but there's also addictions so addictions can have a lot of different presentation it doesn't mean that addiction is only to drugs people have addiction to social media people have addictions to the internet people have addiction to gambling um, and then people have addictions to different types of things and now, nowadays because kids are more into technology they can have addictions to video games or pornography or the computer or even um, there could be some reason in their life that spurred them to torture themselves and so because of that they get addicted to self-destructive habits like um, exercising too much or not eating enough or different things like that um, so these are all a different variation and I, again like we talked about there's a spectrum so some people might be on one side of the spectrum some people might be on the other side of the spectrum but it's something that we have to see as kind of a fluid thing there's it's very easy for us to label people into boxes and we already do that in the panth. We say, this is Nihang, this is Taksali, this is Akhand Kitani, this is this person, this is non aksariya this is missionary. We label people because we think that by labeling people, it makes it very convenient for us that we can easily define somebody. But when we label someone, we also limit our relationship with them. Because if Vaiguru is Beant, the Vaiguru that's inside of everyone is also Beant. And the experience that someone is going through, whether it's their Jathibandi, or whether it's their job, or whether it's their age, or their gender, or whether it's their mental health, it doesn't define them. They're just one Atma that came from Paramatma in a human body, experiencing this life, going through different types of things. And... Um, a long time ago, I saw uh, someone who, you know how on, on Twitter they have the bio, and someone had posted on their bio, another version of you. So if we recognize each other just as that, that we are all the same, but we're just other versions of each other. Vaiguruji made us all, and so we are just all different versions of Vaiguru. So I wanted to share a quote with you. Um, about this topic and it's something that can shed some light on it um, it's by uh, 
it was, there was a research study done and one of the researchers said this. He says, mental health disorders need to be addressed as disorders of distributed brain systems with symptoms forged by developmental and social experiences. So it's your, there's two different components. One is it's just something is happening within your brain. Environmental factors during critical intervals of development exert long-term effects on gene expression. So when you go through something in your childhood or when you go through something in your life, it can actually affect your, your brain. It can actually affect the way your brain develops. And so that's why we see a lot of people who went through trauma as a child or who went through abuse as a child, then when they grow up, they have to deal with that. Studying unconscious processes, motivation, or defenses while at one time the sole province of psychoanalytic therapies are now also in the domain of cognitive neuroscience. So what does that mean? That means that people are not only studying, uh, did something happen to you? Did this make you feel that way? Did this make you feel that way? But actually, did it change your brain? And what does that mean? That means that the people who we call Amali or Shrabi or things like that. We call people labels. A lot of times their brain has changed because what, have hap what has happened in their life. And of course, in the bigger picture, when we talk about karam and we talk about past lives, whatever has happened to us in this life is just a calculation, a natija. It's just the result of all of our karams. But even the things that are happening in our body and in our brain is a result of all of our karams. So sometimes we just look at things as feelings and emotions, but it's also sometimes beyond that. And sometimes people who have addiction or people who have depression, it's not a conscious choice. Nobody, I think, would choose to get addicted. Nobody would choose to get depressed. Nobody would choose to be anxious. So a lot of times when we apply blame to people, we say that it's their fault. That is not helpful to them. Somebody who's addicted to alcohol, so what, uh, what happens to the brain of what are the things that happen to the brain? So when it, and this goes for any habit, there's, there's two different things that happen. When we start doing any habit, doesn't matter what it is, we start making connections between neurotransmitters in our brain and those connections get stronger and stronger and stronger. And so what happens when those connections happen? It makes it easier to do that again. And you notice that when you start a little kid playing tabla when they're very, very young, they can become an amazing tablachi to the effect that when they grow up, they don't even have to look anywhere, they don't even have to think, and they're just playing the tabla, right? Uh, the other day I was at work and I was typing and I was looking at the piece of paper and I was typing and um, the people that I work with, they're saying, wow, wow, Baba Ji, uh, Baba Ji ne uh, karamat karti, akha nal dekh vi nahi the typing ho rahi hai, right? <laughs> and I was like, no, it's not any karamat, it's just practice, right? And they're like, nahi, nahi, tu sita, wow, amazing karti, right? And I was like, no, 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 this is nothing. And I'm like, just like you play amazing tabla and you teach amazing uh, kirtan in the same way uh, I do amazing typing. <laughs> so <laughs> so um, American Psychiatric Association says that the exact causes of mental disorders are unknown, but an explosive growth of research has brought us closer to the answers. We can say that certain inherited dispositions interact with triggering environmental factors. So inherited dis disposition, that means, um, like, like we say, our vichars, we first have a furna, then the furna turns into a vichar. We have like a fleeting thought. Then the fleeting thought turns into a composed thought, right? And the composed thought, there can be man bachkaram. You can have it in your man, then you can use it, you can say it, or you can turn it into action. Then it's written, then you have done it. That's why it's so important, and I'm speaking to myself too, that when we have thoughts, then if we have to say something or do something, we have to really measure it. One of the more senior teachers in the school where I teach, she said, Pele tolo, fir bolo. So measure what you're going to say, then say it. So in the same way, a lot of times, Aisa kama mule na ki ant ya. 
in the beginning if we know, and I've done a lot of those things, a lot of pop, a lot of karams that I wish that I hadn't done, and we all have done those. But now, going forward, right? We can know what to do in the future. And a lot of times, even our mental dispositions that get us into mental illness are related to our karam. So, then it also interacts with environmental factors. So what's happening around us? So poverty and stress are well known to be bad for your health. This is true for your mental health and physical health. In fact, the distinction between mental illness and physical illness can be misleading. Like physical illness, mental disorders can have a biological nature. Many physical illness can also have a strong emotional component. So people are going through something physical, like high cholesterol, high blood pressure, diabetes, cancer, any type of physical disease, some type of surgery, even a broken ankle, even a broken fingernail, whatever it is you're going through, it can have an emotional component, right? Oh my God, my fingernail broke, right? What are the people going to think when I go to the party today? People are going to be looking at my fingernail. Then you have start judging yourself. There's all of these different components, right? People have... Uh, emotional connection with the physical health and a physical connection with their emotional health and that's why whatever happens in our mind it can pargat, it can come out as a rogue so that's why even Guru Sahib talks about these things they say that a lot of times we have the physical um, manifestations of what's actually going on inside so how does Guru Sahib define it? yes Absolutely. If if uh, if Guru Sahib has written Mera Bad Guru Gobinda, if Guru Sahib has written um, that all of the different things that we have done in our uh, in our life can be destroyed, they say um, Jaise Pavak Kast Pasmam Krot, like a whole whole pile of what can be destroyed by just one flame, one chingari, right? So in the same way, Guru Sahib can destroy our karams, past karams, right? Um, in any in any circumstance, Guru Sahib is Sarb Kala Samrat, right? So they have the power, but we, it's our responsibility to do the Ardas and to do the Simran and to put our effort in. So Guru Sahib s- explains these three things. Sorry about the Sihariya. Um, ad, Bayad and Upad. So Guru Sahib says that these different illnesses, they affect us. And all of the um, cure is in Nam. At the same time, we use physical therapy. We use physical medication for physical illnesses. But we have a big stigma against using medication for mental illnesses. We think that it will change your mind and you will never get to meet God but that's a misconception too yes there's a lot of different medications that are being pushed into the society and it's very important for you to do your research and it's very important to know if a medication is healthy for you or not if it has good side effects or bad side effects all of those kind of things and sometimes people they like to see if by doing exercise and by doing yoga and by doing breathing and by doing simran they can avoid getting any of those illnesses or they can properly treat those illnesses but at the same time someone who's taking uh, medications and who's doing the treatment and then they stop doing it that can have a very harmful effect on them and a lot of times we stop taking them because of the stigma we think that if we continue to take these then um, it's going to be really bad for us and but Guru Sahib says, Jeha har simran paya, teha upad gatakini. So when we focus on doing simran, those different illnesses can get destroyed. So now I want to transition a little bit more into the Gurbani part of it. So next slide. Guru Sahib says, Maya Shaya, this is actually Pai Gurdasi, Maya Shaya, Panch Dut Put, Udmad Tat, Kat, Kat, Katka, Masagar Anek hai. So, lust, anger, the five vices are shadows of maya, maya shaya. These are shadows of maya. 
These have created turbulence in human beings like demons. Many oceans of vices and evils are in rage in the mind of a human being as a result of these. So we go between Agan Sagar, Bik Sagar, Sukh Sagar. We go between Rajogun, Tamogun, Satogun, back and forth, back and forth, all day, all day. And at the same time, Guru uh, Pai Gurdashi says, Aud palaka tika jagad par janta asa lehar tarangme na trisna ki tek hai. So human life is very brief, but its expectations and desires are of eons. There are waves of vices in the ocean-like mind whose cravings are unimaginable. And then they continue on. Man mansa prasang tavat chatur kunt Chanak me khand brahmand jav dek hai. Under the influence of all these cravings and desires, the mind roams about in all four directions and reaches regions beyond in split second time. So that happens to all of us, right? We try our best, we close our eyes to do simran, and all of a sudden we're in a different place. Happens to all of us. Aad ka bayad ka upad ka asad man saad be ko charn saran gur ek hai. So all of the different diseases that we have, if we want to find a cure, despite its engrossment in worries, physical ailments, and many types of other maladies, it cannot be stopped from wandering. The refuge of the true guru is the only means of controlling it. So this is something that we know. We know that Guru Sahib can help us. Guru Sahib can cure the different illnesses. But we don't submit to Guru Sahib. We don't surrender we don't surrender, right? We, we don't surrender. And because we don't surrender, we keep our... It says in um, Guruji that this is homeki teet hai. We are very teet. And instead of being the good teet, Guru Sahib says, Pavo daan teet hoi mango. If we actually want the daan of getting better, of getting healing, then we can also get that done. But instead, we have a home meki titai. So they say, Puran Brahm Gur Puran Kirpa Jo Kare Hara Home Rog Rida Nimrta Nivas Hai. So they have the power to get rid of our Home Rog and put Nimrta into our heart. Sabd Surta Livleen Sad Sang Mil Pavani Pagat Pai Dubida Vinas Hai. So the reason we have a lot of those diseases is because of our dubda. We are in love with the world and we are also in love with um, Guru Sahib, but we want to keep our feet in both boats at the same time. So does this mean that the people who have a mental illness, it's their fault? Or does this mean that people who have a mental illness, that they are bad? No. There's a lot of people who have mental illness and they do simran, they do nitanim, they do keep amrit villa, they keep rahat, they are good gursiks and they're on the path. And they have a lot of PR for Sangat, they have a lot of PR for Guru Sahib. And there's on the same time, we would judge someone who has an illness very quickly. We would judge someone who gets depression very quickly, but we won't judge someone who has the same amount of kamai or has the same jivan, but they have a physical illness. We will judge the person more who has the mental illness, even though it's just an effect on, on their brain. So Guru Sahib says in the next slide, uh, sorry, the next one after this. Kaya rog na chidr kach na kach kada sog mirt mo so it says you might have a body free of disease you don't have any rogue you don't have any disease so we are looking in that quadrant now where someone doesn't have any disease and have no worries and no grief at all this sounds like a great life you may be unmindful of death and night and day revel in pleasures so you have everything that you need you have all the suk, you have no diseases. Sab ki ton apna jina sank tarya. So you have no shanka in your mind, you do everything that you want to do. Whatever you want to do, you do it. But at the same time, what does Guru Sahib says? Chitna ayo par braham jam kankar vas parya. So even if you have no disease, even if you have no illness, but if we don't do Simran, if we don't remember Vaiguru, then we're still going to 
be taken by jamduts. So what does that mean? That means that a lot of people, they have a hankar over their possessions. A lot of people have a hankar over their sroop. But a lot of people also have a hankar over their health, right? It's a different issue if we're trying to motivate people and we're saying, you know, I did this hike and I did this thing and I did this and I'm trying to show you how to do that. But a lot of times we have hankar over our body or over our mind. Guru Sahib says that that hankar is futile. It doesn't mean anything if we're not going to do simran, if we're not going to do bandagi. So at the same time, Guru Sahib gives a hawala, they give a support to the people who do have the illness, who do have worries, who do have anxieties. They say that I am with you and I want to support you. Guru Sahib says, Jako chinta bohat bohat dehi vyapa rog. People who have lots of anxiety and have diseases in their body. Grist kutam paletia kade hark kade sog. And we can all relate to this, right? And it happens all the time. The last time when I talked about this, it was at Guru Nanak Academy. And that day, the same day, it was a wedding in our house. The people in the, in the basement of our house, they had a wedding. And so the newly wedded couple was going to come into our house. And we helped them with the decorations and everything like that. And the same morning as the wedding, it was my mamaji's funeral. Same morning. So on the one hand, there's people leaving from my house going to a funeral. And on the other hand, there's people coming to my house for a wedding. And that Duksuk is part of life, right? Duksuk doe kar kapre pehre jaye manuk. This is something that we come to the earth with. These are different kapre that we have to put on and take off the duk and the suk. Gaon kare chaho kuntaka kadi na baisan soe. Chit aave os par brahm taan maan sital hoye. So, if we have all of these chinta, fikr, if we have these diseases, but if we remember Vaiguru, then you will have peace of mind. You will have peace. But, you know, there's a common saying that a lot of times it takes, Vaiguruji will help for sure, but sometimes it takes time. And we have to wait for that. We have to do, continue to do ardas. And a lot of times we lose faith on the, on the, on the way. We lose faith on the way to getting Vaiguruji's blessings. So this is something about our stigma again. By Gurdashji, they're talking about people who have different types of illnesses, mental health, addiction. They say, Jaise posti sunat kahat post buro. So you might hear that something is bad, but it's really hard to stop it. Even if you want to leave it, you can't leave it. So he uses this example. He says that someone who is addicted, they hear that it's wrong. And just by a show of hands, how many people here have someone like that in their family, friends or relatives when it comes to drugs or alcohol? That they know it's wrong, but they still continue to consume it. So more than half of us. And this happens in a lot of families um, where these people, they know it's wrong. And there's some people who they're actually very religious. And right? Because then their inhibitions are gone and then they say, Naimanu nay pini chaidi, right? And you know, Sanu Saryanu Simran Karna Chaida and they say that under the influence, right? But then when they get back, then they say, Oh, I need to. But a lot of times it's not something that they can control because they've made that highway in their mind. A lot of times we make that highway in our mind between the different neurotransmitters that we make it so easy to keep doing that. So easy to keep doing that habit over and over to the effect that it doesn't feel like a habit anymore. And at the same time, Guru Sahib is so amazing that they could turn Sajjan Tag into a Gurmukh. They could turn Kaudarakash into a Gurmukh. They could turn Valikandari into a Gurmukh. They could turn Pumiya Chor into a Gurmukh who had habits that were so ingrained inside their mind, but they were still able to let go of those habits. Jaise jua khel batahar balkha juari, tau par juaran ki sangat na tutai. So you might lose your money, you might lose your possessions, and you keep losing over and over and you say, oh man, never again. Never again. 
But then as soon as someone calls you, hey, you want to go out? And you get back into that Sangat. And a lot of you here who are Amritari, who are Gursik, you might think, well, I'm lucky I don't have that kind of Sangat. But there is that kind of Sangat who tries to get you into doing Ninda Chaguli. Then you lose all your Kamai, right? Happens to me, happens to all of us. We start to get into Sangat of people who are doing Ninda Chaguli, and then they take all of our Kamai away. Or there's people who do chinta fikr and they throw the chinta fikr onto you. A lot of times people don't know how to deal with their worries, so they throw the worries onto you. They make you worried and then they have a worry club going on, they have a worry sangat going on. Right? Next. Jase chor chori jat hirda sahakat pun tajat na chori jao lao sees hi na chutai. The chor is not going to leave their chori even until they get killed while stealing. Right? And this Sakhi comes in uh, Gurbani as well. There are so many people who, until the very limit, they won't leave their habit, even though they know it. Hanji Panji. So, um, Oh, sure. So Panji was saying that to explain a little bit more of the changes that go on in your, in your body. Um, so what happens in our body when we stress, we release different types of hormones, we re release different types of um, uh, chemicals. So there's different types of chemicals that release. And some in some mental illnesses, those chemicals are deficient. So for example, in ADHD, the dopamine neurotransmitters are deficient. You can't, the connection is not there. So people who have ADHD, they need to take stimulants. And so sometimes people who don't take ADHD medication, they'll have coffee or they'll have dark chocolate. And then there are some of us who like to point a finger at them and say, tu nasha kar daya, tu cha pinia, tu uh, coffee pinia, nasha kar deo, right? But a lot of people, they're not doing nasha. They're actually just getting their mind to that same level where everybody else is. So if, for example, um, there's somebody who, there's two people, there's an there's a illustration I didn't put in the slide, but there's an illustration of a child who's trying to reach over a fence and a tall person who's trying to reach over a fence. And it shows you the difference between equality and equity. So equality means that you give each person a two-foot stool. You let them stand on the two-foot stool. So, jeda banda already che foot ta hega onnu, do foot ta stool kede kam da, right? He is already able to see over the fence. And you give him a two foot stool, why? Because we have to be equal, right? But then there's something called equity. And equity means when you make the two people at the same level. And so then what would you have to do? The nyana, the chota bacha that's maybe three feet tall, you would have to give them something to make them at the same level as the six foot person. So you would have to give them more of a boost. So a lot of people using the same example who have mental illness, they have deficiencies. And a lot of times we don't know what the deficiencies are. Sometimes if your thyroid is high or low, you could have different symptoms. Sometimes if your iron is high or low, you could have different symptoms. A lot of people, because they're vegetarian or they're vegan, especially in women, their iron can get low or they can be anemic. And because of that, they can have different mental health symptoms and they can think, I have depression, but it's actually low iron or low vitamin B12 or low vitamin D. So that's why it's so important to recognize because the physical things, a lot of the physical things, it can contribute to your mental health. For men, if someone has low testosterone, for women, if they're same, if their estrogen or their thyroid hormones are not balanced, if their growth hormone is not balanced. So all of these things can cause it. At the same time, when we stress out a lot, then our cortisol levels can go up and down. And that can cause us to develop illnesses as well. So it's very important for us to check in on our physical health as well. You can go for a blood test, check your levels, go to a naturopath, talk about what kind of things you're deficient in, what kind of things you have enough of, because those things can affect your uh, mental health as well. Um, sorry, I was just going to read the last line. So it says, Taise sab kahet sunat maya dukhdai. So this is where they come to the chort part, right? They say, Sare kende ake maya kinni pehdiya, maya kinni maariya. Everybody says it, right? 
ਕਾਹੂ ਪੈਨਾ ਜੀਤੀ ਪਰ ਮਾਇਆ ਜਗ ਲੁਟਈ nobody is winning over this maya this maya is actually stealing everything right amrit lute manmukh nahi bujha this is happening to us right maya hoi nagni jag tarhi laptaye iski seva jo kare tisi hi ko phir khaye so that happens to us because we we know maya is not good and at the same time a lot of why did they use this example they use this example and it's so amazing how they use this example that they normalized addiction they said addiction happens to people and they can't let it go so stop judging them actually help them and we judge people a lot if we go to the more poor areas of our town whether it's london or new york or san francisco or vancouver or toronto or wherever it is in the world the places that we see people who are suffering from addiction we love to judge them we say get off the streets get a job do this but we don't understand the circumstances that led them to that so a lot of times addiction is not it it starts with a choice but it doesn't remain a choice and that's why you have to have daya if guru sahib didn't have daya on sajjan thug if guru sahib didn't have daya on bhumiya chor then there would be a totally different picture but guru sahib has daya on anyone everyone so we were talking about thoughts a little bit hanji paisa absolutely absolutely exactly we we are all guru sahibs yes yeah absolutely yeah sota prad karta hai jete janni chit na rakh stete why guru ji doesn't remember ਆਪਾਂ ਆਪਣੀ ਨੋਟਬੁੱਕ ਫੜੀ ਹੁੰਦੀ ਆਪਣੇ ਦਿਮਾਗ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਉਹਨੇ ਐਦਾ ਕੀਤਾ ਉਹਨੇ ਉਦਾਂ ਕੀਤਾ ਰਾਈਟ ਪਰ ਗੁਰੂ ਸਾਹਿਬ ਦੇ ਮਿੱਠ ਬੋਲੜਾ ਜੀ ਹਰ ਸੱਜਣ ਸੁਆਮੀ ਮੋਰਾ ਹਉ ਸੰਮਲ ਥੱਕੀ ਜੀ ਉਹ ਕਦੇ ਨਾ ਬੋਲੈ ਕੋੜਾ ਕੋੜਾ ਬੋਲ ਨਾ ਜਾਣੈ ਪੂਰਨ ਭਗਵਾਨ ਹੈ ਔਗਣ ਕੋ ਨਾ ਚਿਤਾਰੇ ਵਾਹਿਗੁਰੂ ਜੀ ਇਜ਼ ਵੇ ਵੇ ਬਿਗਰ ਥੈਨ ਆਵਰ ਲਿਮਿਟਿਡ ਜਜਮੈਂਟਲ ਮਾਈਂਡਸੈਟ ਸੋ ਥੀਸ ਥੌਟਸ the thoughts come in different waves we have these three different oceans rajogun tamogun satogun and in order to get across in order to reach vaiguruji we have to get to satogun but then reach beyond satogun so guru sahib has been gun kite bhagat na hoye we won't even be able to do simran if we're always in rajogun and tamogun we won't be able to focus but at the same time there's a lot of people who are in satogun and then they don't get beyond that so I just want to go back to the addictions topic because of, of our judgment uh in the next slide. So this is um uh, Johan Hari, he's an English writer and journalist. He says, for hundreds of years we've been singing war songs about addicts. I think all along we should have been singing love songs to them. The opposite of addiction is not sobriety. The opposite of addiction is connection. Why do you think so many of the people who had been doing pop why did they change did they change because guru sahib went and hit them with a danda on the head no guru sahib went and connected them to vai guru showed them their man showed them that this is what you are man tu jyot swarup hai apna mool pehchan and when they recognized that then they said okay where am i and where should i be and a lot of times we judge each other instead of giving each other love and instead of giving each other support so guru sahib says lalla lavo okhad jahu dukh dard te mit hai khinahu naam okhad jahrid hitave tahe rog supne nahi aave if we are in that if we have that connection then we won't even experience rog in our supne in our dreams so there's a lot of ways that we can help this and a lot of times we think that in order to help this we have to have a very religious life a uh, dharmic life and dharmic life is very positive in some ways so let's talk about that what are the positives and if anyone wants to add to this please feel free to add it in the next slide so positives of religious structure you have sangat right in sangat you have support you have langar in langar you get good food and you also have community you have discussions you have pangat 
So, Pangat, you have commonality, right? Guru Sahib says, Pale Pangat, Piche Sangat, right? So, they told Akbar Badshah to sit down in the Sangat, in the Pangat, because to show equality. At the same time, when we sit in the Pangat, there's nobody going around and saying, you know, Dal ji, Pashada ji, tenu depression, ya, tenu anxiety. That would be very scary if that was happening, right? People labeling each other in the Sangat, they don't do that. But at the same time, on the flip side, we do do it. Sometimes we take Pangat and we turn it into a gossip area, which is the flip side, which I'll talk about in a second. Seva. When we have a religious structure, when we have Tarmic structure, we have Seva. And what does Seva do? It gives you a purpose. And Seva is very, very important to help people to come out of hardship. Because a lot of times when people have hardship, they feel like, what is the point? What is the point? What am I doing here? And when they do seva, they get a purpose. Right? Prani tu aya laha land. Lagga kit kufakre sab mukdi chali A lot of times we get involved in other things. Guru Sahib says, this is the kam that you came to do. So, sanctuary. A lot of times they feel safe in the Gurdwara or Sangat or at a camp. People feel safe in the Sangat. And of course, meditation. When you do meditation, you get clarity, you get focus, you realize what your purpose is. And then vichar, when we do learning, when we do ghost, when we do um, koj, then we learn things, we get perspective, we get empathy. And in camps like this, we engage with other people, we get out and we meet other gursiks and then we learn that people are just like us. But are there negatives? Before I go to the next slide, I want to ask you, do you think there's any negatives? The manmat that we bring in to the religious structure, okay. So, let's talk about that. So, community. Community also provides a place for gossip, right? Where there's people who can do vichar, or there's people who can do Hansa Hire Moti Chaguna Bhag Dadda Palan Jai. The people who come to the Sarovar, the Hans, they want Moti, and the Bhagala, it wants Daddus. It wants to have Daddus, right? So at the same time, we are like that. Sometimes we come to Sangat, we come here, people come here to get the valuable lessons. And some people come here to get the valuable gossip, right? That they can share with other people. Uh, anonymity. So a lot of times what happens is we feel more lonely when we come to Sangat because we haven't connected to Guru Sahib, right? And loneliness is not necessarily bad, right? Kisi koi koi man yanimani ek tu. As long as we have tu, but sometimes we don't even have Wai Guru in our mind. So then we feel extremely lonely. Language. So a lot of times language can be exclusive. If people only speak Punjabi and people don't speak English, then you feel like you're excluded. You can't learn what you want to learn. Accessibility. So a lot of times we don't make places accessible for people with physical disabilities, physical challenges, or we don't make places accessible because we don't provide daycare for parents, or we don't make places accessible because all of the Singhs are talking and they don't let any of the Bibiya talk, or all of the Singhs are on the committee and they have one token Bibiya on the committee, Right? who just comes to Langa Hall to make the Prashad Day. That's how we label people. We say, this is what the Singh's got to do, this is what the BBM got to do. So we don't make places accessible. We don't allow people to have the freedom. And we say that this is youth committee and everybody has chittiya dariya. Right? <laughs> so, misunderstandings. Um, there, there can be misunderstandings when we come into Sangat if we don't do vichar with Gursiks. If we don't do vichar with Gurmukhs, a lot of times people, they see something and they see it on the screen and maybe the translation is wrong or maybe that the translation is a little bit off and we just take that home and we say, I can't believe Guru Sahib believes this or said this or I can't believe that Kathavachik said that and we take misunderstandings home. Uh, and also in the discourse, in the vichar, a lot of times there's reiteration of false stereotypes, right? So the false stereotypes happens in the announcements when we have the announcements or when we have the 
katha, a lot of times, sometimes people are giving false stereotypes about uh, mental health or about physical health or about different castes, caste system, things like that. And then lack of training. So how amazing would it be if all of the Granthis, first of all, if there was a mix of Granthis, of youth and elder, if there was women and men, if there was a mix of Granthis, but how amazing would it be if the Granthis had training on mental health? And when someone comes in to get a wedding, booking done, they wouldn't just say, Hanji, we have a booking in 2050, that's the next booking available, and you have to you know, put in your $3,000 now, and then you put in your $15,000 later, and we will have this much Shahi Paneer and this many Jalabiyah. That's not the main thing. The main thing that a Granthi could do is say, Oh, you want to book a wedding here? Okay. First, we have this pre-marriage counseling program. You have to watch this video. You have to talk to this marriage counselor. You have to talk to this Gursik. They'll teach you about what the Lama are. They'll teach you about what is Guru Sahib teaching about marriage. And they'll teach you about how to manage your finances, how to manage your Grista Jeevan. What does Grista Jeevan mean? Then you can come and get married here. But we don't want that. We don't. We have to look at the how much peta people are giving in first. So all of these things com compiled. And this is where the hope is. The hope is in you because you're going to change things, right? Because yeah, yeah. <laughs> there's a pressure in the religious structure. <laughs> yeah, there's pressure, pressure to change things, right? <laughs> okay, so next slide. Yes. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, and it's it's really um, great that there's some uh, people in Sangat who are making these safe spaces for people to talk. Um, there's support groups that are coming up in different places and some places don't have that and it's really great especially like in England there I mean it's not great that the issue is happening of uh, grooming but at the same time people are confronting it now and they're talking about it that peop uh, young women are getting targeted and they are openly talking about that and then at the same time talking about um, childhood abuse and molestation and what happens in different families what happens to young people when they're growing up and why we should talk about it and these kind of issues why don't we talk about it going back to the first uh, few minutes when I was saying about stigma and the lok lajja we feel very worried about people's judgment but if we worry about people's judgment we won't be able to get over that we won't be able to get the cure or the healing that we need so, Bible Jeet Singh, you might know him. He says, Maharaj says, Sangat ka gun bahut adkai. The effect of Sangat is very great. I thought I could still associate with the same friends. I could still be amongst the same people and I wouldn't be affected, but I was so wrong. And because of that, I had a roller coaster of a life for about 10 years. And trying to be in Sikhi, but I just keep falling off. I'd last about a year and then drink again, then last two years, then I'd fall off again. Bhai Sahib, showed courage by showing their message and how they came into Sikhi, how they overcame their own challenges. And at the same time, they're giving us that example that it's really hard to um, stay on that path because it's really hard, easy to le uh, relapse. It's really, really easy to go back into that Sangat. So it's so important to keep in the right Sangat. Katrai Nuri Sarapa Nur Bash so this is what Bhai Nandalaji says, please forgive me for my ucharan. O human being, you are one of the rays of the divine glow and become engulfed in divine, get rid of any worries or suspicions and get inebriated permanently in his memory. So if we want to have one nasha, we can have the nasha of nam. If we get connected to the nasha of nam, all of the chinta will be gone. Turki Bani Ai Tin Sagali Jint Mitai. How long would you be in never ending captivity of anxieties? So at some point we have to own our own future. We have to say, how long do we wanna have anxiety? How long do we wanna have depression? Get rid of sorrows and griefs, remember the Lord and stay safe and secure. 
if we want to have a safe place thir kar baso har jan pyare sat gur tumre kaaj sware what is that thir kar nij kar mahal paav ho sukh sahaj bohr na hoye go phera what is that thir kar it's by doing simran but sometimes we want it right away we don't want to go through the struggle but guru sahib says paana ujjad paana raha paana har gun gurmukh gaava it's all happening in guru sahib's hukum and if we try to impose our timeline on that then we are not following guru sahib's hukum a lot of times we have to go through that struggle if i didn't go through that struggle i wouldn't be in front of you today to talk about this and there's a lot of people who have gone through different struggles and they talk about those struggles because you translate the pain into power you translate the struggle into seva and that is the most effective way to translate that to change that so there's a quote by dr ravinder singh he says if we impose our own timeline to a purpose we set we will be disappointed if it's not met we want something to happen right away expectations will limit you your job is to do what you're supposed to do and leave the rest to a kalpurk so we have to have parosa as parosa khasam ka nanak ke jiyare we have to have parosa in why guru that things will get better things will turn around so again by nandlal ji he says what is distress and depression it is the negligence of his meditation what is pleasure and joy it is remembrance of the almighty of infinite dimensions so we give these physical illnesses the name of depression but what does guru sahib say they say akha jeeva visra mar jao dukh tade jad visra jaye i feel pain when i forget why guru kyon visra dukh bahut lagae ki visra dukh bahut lagae dukh lagae tu visra nahi that's what they define as the d- depression that's what they define as the illness cuz when we talk about these illnesses a lot of times we attach our judgment to them instead of attaching judgment we should just attach love to them so that people can get over them it is said according to the doctor of love i love this why guru ji is the doctor of love it is said according to the doctor of love that no one except why guru knows the pain and suffering of separation no one listens to the sad stories of the destitute so why guru ji is saying that sometimes we feel this loneliness right sun na ha prabhu ji o ek kaladi ban ma hai but when we have that tarf when we have that ardas then why guru ji comes and they help us next slide so what helps there's a lot of things that you can do in your own life that can help that can help you to overcome one is counseling don't be scared to talk to people don't be scared to talk to the right people So I added the word right in there the correct people because a lot of times we talk to people and they're not safe they are going to gossip about us we have to be careful about who you talk to about your personal concerns because someone could take it the wrong way but a counselor they're bound by the law and by their code of conduct professional code of conduct to keep confidentiality the last time i spoke at an event there was a mom who didn't want to send her son to counseling because she thought that the counselor is going to tell the police i said what's wrong he said oh 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 that to homework nahi hunda da dhyan nahi judda so aunty ji she's not going she's not going to call the police over homework don't worry right um so medication if you need it you shouldn't feel the stigma about taking it if you're taking it and you start doing more simran you start keeping amritvela you start doing those things and you're still taking it you don't have to feel the stigma or the shame of taking medication coaching so coaching is different from counseling coaching is um a little bit more focused towards giving you tools and tips and techniques whereas a counselor more listens to you and helps you through a course of a type of um therapy accountability partner so we have this sometimes in our friends in our sangat we have someone who we are accountable to them they are accountable to us to get certain things done uh positive sangat and this is something that i mentioned before fixing nutritional deficiencies so a lot of times those deficiencies are what's causing low mood 
or what's causing we eat so many chips and pakore and samosa and then we have you know so many slurpees and freezies and things like that and then we don't exercise and then we wake up we sleep until two in the morning and then we wake up and we don't get enough sleep and then we say i'm not feeling that well <laughs> it's common sense a lot of times the things that we put into our body that's what happens to our mind increasing our exercise sleep and laughter and so i hope that i made you laugh a few times but um, we need to increase our laughter because um, it's there's the two kinds of laughter, right? One is when you get ras of naam, right? Rang hasa, rang rove, right? But then there's another, just your physical body laughter when we tell jokes, when we have a good environment. That's good for you. It's good for your mental health. What can you do to support someone? So when someone around you is struggling, you can not go in with some type of knife and scalpel and take the surgery and take the depression out. You can't do that. And you can't go with a hammer and say, you have to change, you have to change, you have to change. You can't do that. You just have to be a helping hand. You just have to be a support. You just have to say, if you need to talk, I'm here for you. I can maybe not totally relate to what you're going through. A lot of times we say, I know how you feel. I understand, but you don't. You don't know exactly. You didn't go through the exact same thing. So it's better to just say, I'm here for you. If you want to talk, we can talk about it. And then you can also connect someone to the supports that they need, to the services that they need. So lastly, I just want to say again, Guru Sahib gives us this guarantee that they are here for us. Guru Sahib can they are, Jaha jaha man tu taavta, teh teh har tera na le, sat gur milaya taavt thamme ha, nej kar vasya aaye, man tu jyot sarup hai, aapna mool pachhaan, man har ji tera naal hai, gur mati rang maan. So, Guru Sahib Kirpa Karan, that we can get over our fear of the judgment of others and fix the things that we need to fix and at the same time if we need to take support of the physical supports the counseling the therapy things like that and at the same time if we need to take support i mean we have to take support of why guru then we should also work on that lastly i just want to share with you our organization it's called south asian mental health alliance you can check us out at sama.org and I also moderate a forum on Reddit. Um, this one is not Sikhi related, not South Asian related. It's very open and there's a lot of people who have different discussions on there. But I've been moderating this forum for about six years and we have almost 30,000 members now uh, having discussions on there. So I hope that someday maybe someone in the Sangat here will create forums like this or create sanghats within their local community so that people can talk openly about the things that we need to talk about. So, Pyari Saad Sangat Ji, Pulla Chukandi Khema Karni, Vaheguru Ji Ka Khalsa, Vaheguru Ji Ki If you enjoyed this video, please like, comment, share and subscribe. Please donate and help spread Guru Ji's message. Link is in the description below. Vaheguru Ji Ka Khalsa, Vaheguru Ji Ki Fateh. I'm